okay welcome to this video and i'll be talking about will five years or more study gap in your education cause problem or challenges when you are seeking for admission or visa to go study abroad okay so in other words if there is a, a time gap between when you studied last and now that you are ready to go abroad to study with that would this be a problem would it be a challenge for you we they deny you visa because of it we they say they are not going to give you admission because of it the short answer is no this is not going to cause a problem and the better answer is this can even be an advantage your study gap can be an advantage so why some people are still busy thinking oh is it going to be a problem are they going to give you admission are they going to give me visa your study um gap can become an advantage and i'm going to talk to you about that okay so what, what most people what do they do they, uh, some people finish school and then they apply for their masters and immediately they can apply for their phd as well while that is good other people take a different route right they finish uh, let's say on the graduate program and then they go about their life and do some things most times these people walk in between as well right they walk in between and then they do other things if it's uh, women they get married they give birth if it's um men they get married as well or they work or you know whatever that can be raising a family doing other things <laughs> you won't even believe it when i finish i when i finished my undergraduate program i went to dental school i became a dentist i didn't immediately jump in and started my master's right away i was doing my master's application quite all right but it still took me about uh two years gap okay that's not a big but today i'm focusing on people who have more than five years gap which also also means that even if it's one year or two years gap you can still learn from what i'm saying right now right so <laughs> what then happens is that you get about you do all this study this work family or whatever else that interests you i wanted to give you an example with myself that after dental school i actually went to fashion school <laughs> will you believe that i am an art person so trust me by the time because of dental school was so rigorous i spent uh without repeating any exam without even receiving any exam i spent um roughly eight years in dental school okay so in my country is a one straight program from like your undergraduate undergraduate days to the dental school full dental school and you graduate as a dentist so it's a very long process i understand that some country it is broken where you first do like a three years or four years uh, bachelor's in any of the sciences then you progress to do the um uh clinical dental program or clinical medical program in nigeria where i come from um the program is a is one straight program so it takes so long so i spent eight years trying to be a dentist that's where my doctor came from <laughs> so when you hear people call me dr linda iheme it's because i'm a dentist some people have confused it for any, uh, many things so some say are you a native doctor <laughs> don't worry i'm not a native doctor okay <laughs> i'm a dentist okay and that aside i just released the dental book recently have you heard it have you seen it the name of the book is dental secrets okay so if you've not seen it you can check it on amazon you can check it on audible there's the audio version you can check it on our website dentalhouse.co co so just uh, this is the other side of my life okay i'm a dentist in as well uh, in as much as i'm an educational consultant <laughs> okay back to the story that i'm telling you right i went on to do fashion school immediately after my graduation because i wanted to explore i wanted to see what life is out there um i eventually went to this story is so interesting and bring back sweet memories I, if you know nikkei arts nikkei arts is uh, a very uh, big nikkei uh, the woman nikkei she's a very uh, big artist She's from Nigeria. She has gone to several schools to tutor abroad. 
right because her artwork is so glamorous seriously so i went to nikkei art gallery in oshobo and i spent some time there learning how to prepare tie-dye materials and um oh i've forgotten the name um tie-dye material and other type of prints right then i went to lagos to learn how to sew clothes <laughs> actually i like linda is that true what is wrong with you well <laughs> well the, anyway enough of the story so let me come back to the topic which is what what do you what happens during your education gap what people can do with education gap which is why i was telling you my own story but is that a disadvantage to you when you are playing for schools no that is an advantage you can you can make it an advantage how that's why you're wondering linda everybody has told me that this gap, this 10 years gap that I have between my studies is a problem. I recently interviewed a superhero mom right now, uh, a few hours ago, when she was telling us that her, her, the gap between her undergraduate studies and her master's was seven years. And she got full scholarship. And she has been getting full scholarships as well, even going forward. So the point is that you, when you have the education gap, just like her, you can get full scholarship. You can study abroad. You will get your admission. You get your visa. If you listen exactly to what I'm about to tell you now. Most times, those seven years, you don't spend them doing nothing. You don't just sleep on your bed, right? You are doing something. You are either working or volunteering somewhere. Let me. Some people will say, oh, I, I, I also working. The fact that nobody was paying you salary doesn't mean that you weren't working. That's not true. Be, there's hardly anybody who has a 10 years, let's say for example, who has a 10 years uh, academic gap, right? Who throughout that 10 years, all they did was wake up in the morning, eat, and then sleep back on their bed. The question is, what were you doing during those 10 years? So let's explore some of the things that people do, right? So for some people, they were working. So put your work experience in that gap. It's not a gap because you have work experience. Put your work experience, but most importantly, try to bring out the things you learned from your work that can now apply to school, uh, school. For example, if during your work, you had the opportunity to work with teams, you can, now this is team building, ability to work in teams, right? These are transferable skills that you can get from your work. It best, if your work was even in your area of your undergraduate degree, what, the, what, what that means is that you have direct experience. So you are far better than somebody who just graduated today and is starting school today. That's one thing you don't realize. You are far better because you have industry experience. That's what it's called. Okay? That's what it's called. You have industry experience. That's a, a, another one. So then, the other thing you have to notice is that some people, they were not working paid job, right? They were doing volunteer job. Like, they were doing something for free. The fact that they were doing something for free that they were not paid doesn't mean that it's not valuable. It is valuable. It is valuable. So put that... Don't, don't, you don't necessarily have to say, when you put your work, do you put, I was paid so so amount to do this job? No. You just put your work and where it work. So whether it was paid or not, put it there as your work experience. Okay? Now, you can see some people... Oh, they were not officially volunteering somewhere. But let's assume that during that period, you were a Sunday school teacher. Now, you may think that, yeah, this is not part of your work. You were busy doing nothing, but it's not true. Put it there that you were a Sunday school teacher. Now that you're a Sunday school teacher, you were teaching. So, see some of the things you were learning. You were learning how to teach kids. You were learning how to probably teach adults or young adults or teenagers. You were learning how to be patient. How to manage these people. These things are skills that everybody is looking for. And they will be very happy to see someone who has that. You see the point? So, there are things you were doing. Whether you, they were paid or non-paid. Think through them. Document them on your CV. Use it to fill in that gap. Because I cease to believe that there is somebody who has 10 years gap in their study. And what? They were sleeping and waking up every day just uh, throughout that 10 years no even if you were a housewife what were the things you were doing as a housewife doing groceries you were managing a home right you were doing budgeting for that house you were raising children most likely you were you um yeah 
if you were supporting let's say you're a, a wife and you were supporting your husband yeah that is not a paid job yeah that is not a role but the question i will ask you is that same job you were doing though it was not paid though it was not called an official employment if somebody else was to come in to do that job for you one what is the what name will you call that job what title will you give that person coming to work document it so instead of saying i, I was doing nothing because nobody does nothing Nobody does nothing. So, it, let's say your husband is a doctor. Let me just put it up. Your husband is a doctor. But you usually assist him in one way or the other. So, you can put executive assistant to a doctor. Hey, you see it? Executive assistant to a doctor. Your husband is... Uh, I'm just talking specifically about women. Because women usually have that challenge. Where they are like, I was just at home. I wasn't doing anything. Right? So executive assistant to your husband's role don't say executive assistant to my husband no if your husband is a doctor if he's a nurse if he's a politician if he's a uh a welder if he's anything if he's a cook executive assistant to a cook then bring out all the things you have to do we did you have to do budgeting do you have to do material management at all how to make sure that Oh, the fish is getting, we're getting out of stock with the fish. Let's put, let's buy more fish. Vegetable is ending. Let's buy, it's finishing. Let's buy more vegetable. Food is running out. People need to eat. All those things. They are called, most nurses perform this role in any hospital. They're the ones that marry, um, they're the ones that make sure that the hospital have enough equipment, face masks and all those things. So there's even the, the supply chain supply chain management supply chain management this is the role of the person who is taking note of inventories and making sure that we don't run out of stock in this house or in this company so if you were doing that role you were performing the role of a supply chain manager are you aware so when you tell me that you were doing nothing i don't believe you the only way you are you will convince me that you were doing nothing is that every day you wake up when you wake up somebody puts food in your mouth with your eyes half closed, they put food in your mouth, and at the end, you close, then you sleep back. Then I will agree with you that you were doing nothing. If not, find a name for the role you were performing and put it on your CV. What is going to happen? You have closed that gap. You no longer have gap. And then bring out the skills you were using. Is it management skills? Is it time, uh, time management skills? Budgeting skills? Um, uh, I'm just thinking top of my head. Right? I'm just thinking of if, if you were to take our master class and you brainstorm after we teach you about CV, you'll be able to outrightly cover your CV and get a gorgeous CV. Now, some people are like, hey, what else should I do? Do you know that? Okay. I was talking with a friend recently. What how, during COVID time, if you're following my page during COVID period, when COVID started, I don't know if you remember me telling people that. If you're following my Facebook page, Dr. Linda Iheme, my Facebook page, I was telling people that now that COVID is here, the pandemic is here, global pandemic is here, instead of you to use this period and be crying, COVID, 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 use it to improve yourself. Take online courses. This lady told me that she got um, a position with WHO in Nigeria, the WHO office in Nigeria. She got a position recently, like I think last week, she got a position with WHO, because, uh, but she was telling me that one of the things that helped her was I had post. Um, I can't remember what, how exactly that happened. Uh, so she took some online courses on COVID, how to manage COVID patients and stuff like that, and she was able to also add that to her CV. So now WHO had an opening. That said, a surveillance for COVID one thing, one thing. So she submitted her CV, but the fact that her CV had the WHO lectures or the WHO certificate, online certificate, they call them micro credentials, online certificate that WHO uh, had for COVID, she had it. Obviously, she was the candidate that stood out. And the fact that she was applying for the job today, but she didn't do the certificate today. So they know that she didn't do this certificate because of this job. She did this certificate like three months ago, right? So she, they gave her that job. So if you're following my page, I know that my page is very transformational for people who really follow the advice that we're dishing out here. So if you are somebody, if you are somebody 
you have gap in your academic uh, academics whether it's more than 10 years whether it's less than 10 years whether it's 12 15 20 trust me there is a way for you to cover it up and you cover it up it becomes an advantage because now you have multiple skills and you put those skills together if somebody's looking at your cv like they should eat it yeah it's like they should eat it yeah. they'll just be chewing your cv because your cv is so creepy so nice so awesome so if you have gap between your education don't feel overwhelmed don't feel like there's nothing you can do about it don't feel like this is the end of the world oh they're going to deny me admission oh they're going to deny me visa it's not true is they're going to deny you visa they're going to deny you admission they're going to deny you visa if you don't know what to do they will deny you visa i i, I can tell you that you come out now from anywhere you say ah i've not been studying for 20 years i just want to go and study you just apply for any how program or you got me to one agent they just help you find a program you apply you go and apply for visa because linda has said that uh, once you have a gap it can be an advantage it's not a problem you will get your visa denied 100 percent i can bet on that but learn what you should do i always say take our master class some people think that when i say take our master class we are after your money well we're after your money <laughs> okay but that's just the tiny portion of it 90 percent of it is because it's going to benefit you as an individual it's going to benefit you as an individual so what are you waiting for what are you waiting for sign up for a master class get started i always say start before you are ready don't wait to be ready start before you are ready if you if your mind tells you you are not ready then this is the best time to start somebody i i was i was going through um some lectures last night i read so much in case you don't i'm not going to school or not school reading like i read so much to get myself informed because i teach almost every day on, on on social media right i teach almost every day do you think those things just pop out from my brain experience but also i do a lot of reading that's the truth so i was reading somewhere and somebody said something like if you start and when you started everything was all perfect chances are that you started so late because you were waiting for everything to be perfect before you started when i said it, i just laugh i said this is just another way of of saying what i've always said which is what start before you are ready okay so start before you are ready somebody said how many weeks is your master class my master class is three uh, 30 days 30 days and you you can chat me inbox to know when to, uh when to get started but i also said that the our vip program is going on right now and you can start today okay you, uh, you can start today with our vip program so i beseech you to stop wasting time and all the things you think they are excuses they are not excuses so haven't you realized they're not excuses people are smashing their goals some people tell me that 2020 2020 was a bad year because of the pandemic that came i say 2020 has been one of my best years one of my best years so if 2020 was not your best year or is not your best year right the problem is you not the year the problem is you not the year but i'm lucky to have you here and you are lucky to find yourself here watching my video right now what that means is that you have access to the information that 90% of the world does not have access to so if you don't make use of it again it is not the pandemic that is your problem you know who is you right but i know you are not going to be your own problem you're going to be the solution to your problem so it, uh, it definitely if you need to reach out to us you can follow us on instagram my instagram is dr linda iheme d r l i n d a i h e m e at dr linda iheme that's on instagram on facebook dr linda iheme that is my page he has thousands and thousands of followers that's the way to know the page don't go and just join any any page fake page or whatever okay or on youtube linda dr linda iheme tv and take care of yourself till you see a lot of my video okay or you can check all the things we've posted before today and 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 and, and get going i hope you take action all these things i've said if you don't take action nothing is going to happen and you know it take action <laughs>